Yeah. Okay, it's good. I think you have a microphone there. Um, so the f the first um, uh, presenter is um, Peter uh, Glynn. He's he's with the International Chamber of Commerce and um, representing the private sector here. That's right, the private sector view. Uh, but uh, that said. Uh, uh, almost any, everything, almost everything I'm going to say now has been said today. It's been uh, it's been a very mature discussion uh, with recognition of the necessary formality uh, of the financing entities. Uh, <laughs> I apologise. Well, no, I don't apologise. Uh, firstly, for the my formal presentation, I, rec I, I refer you to uh, to the website, uh, and I prepared those slides and overheads that are on the official presentation. The ones that you're doing, you'll see here, uh, photographs I've taken from my computer of a presentation by the OECD only last week, they're current, uh, and I, could, I don't have the resources to, <laughs> to repeat them myself, uh, but, and they're also very good. Uh, but what this chart tells us is that the transition to a low carbon scenario, we're going to need uh, $23 trillion investment in the next 15 years. Uh, six trillion dollars per year. This one uh, was explains where that, uh, or attempts to explain where that uh, ninety-three trillion uh, is coming from. As the OECD says, it has in, its institutional, it, sorry, institutional investors that are aligned with the OECD alone manage ninety trillion dollars in assets, and that those uh, uh, those institutional investors are in formerly known as investment funds, insurance companies, pension funds, uh, public pension reserve funds, and, uh, and others. What this slide shows you uh, is that uh, uh, China, Japan, European Union, and the US um, presently have uh, uh, bond issuance. Uh, to 2035 of 600 billion dollars. Uh, the upper line uh, shows you what is going to be needed, another 1800 billion. Uh, yes, 1800 billion is required, is going to be required to uh, achieve the targets. Barriers and policy options. Again, I couldn't do it better than the OECD. Barriers, uh, and you've, you've said them all and you've identified them extremely well. Uh, so it is a very sophisticated, very mature audience, uh, as I said. Uh, but uh, just to, uh, to read them, the barriers, lack of awareness of the opportunities from fin uh, private finance, the lack of supply of bankable projects, uh, the additional issuance costs such as risk insurance, partner compliance requirements, for example, those requirements of the GCF. Definitions and standards is, uh, is also very important, which has probably not been, uh, been mentioned today, but uh, uh, the common uh, standard for the measurement of, green, uh, of greenness in climate finance is the climate bond standard uh, is the most common uh, uh, and followed by the green bond principles, but there are a proliferation of proliferation of other uh, standards that uh, serve no purpose but to uh, uh, to confuse the process. So, uh, definitions and standards must be recognised. Policy requirements establish uh, preconditions. Again, you're aware of this green investment policies, communication and presentation. Uh, the Mexican uh, presentation this morning was, ex was an excellent demonstration of that. A very sophisticated, uh, not so much sophisticated, but just awareness of what the market requires now for them to get what they need, and they've adapted accord accordingly. Public interventions, uh, such as uh, through risk mitigants and uh, uh, transaction enablers, public sector issuance, and greater, greater standardisation. That is, adopt international standards or commonly recognised standards. Don't develop their own uh, uh, domestically. Now here we have what unfortunately is a, a slide that doesn't present very well. Uh, but it is a an example of uh, HSBC, well it is HSBC's green 
for 2016. This is uh, just an extract of the first uh, four or five the entries uh, on that report. Now, the HSBC, HSBC Green Bond uh, had its first issuance in November 2015. It was its first release of funds. In its, this 2016 report, uh, says that uh, Green Climate, that uh, Green Bond, well, their Green Bond issuance has supported 20 projects. Now they've allocated 97% of the bonds, uh, and the funds available in that bond issuance are $500 million. And what's significant, uh, I think, all uh, I suppose that bucks the trend of what's been said here uh, is that uh, no, is that uh, those twenty percent, uh, those twenty projects for of all, were all the contracts were all signed within six months of the application. So the, uh, the long term approval process and uh, of the entity approving entity and of the uh, of the lending uh, and of the project approval process. Yes, it's necessary. Yes, it's essential, but it's not the only way. Uh, and there are um, quickly uh, if you want them. But again, you must also have have the credit uh, the credit rating. Uh, there must be a risk return for the investment. And yes, you will have to meet much of those same requirements. Grand summary, and I can only re re reiterate what you already know and what every speaker has acknowledged. Uh, the finance doesn't come as donations, but it comes as loans. Uh, bankable po projects require a business plan, data to establish a credit rating and a risk return profile. Uh, the, Benefits by the absence of avoidable barriers such as corruption, local content requirements that might offend the WTO, uh, and evidence that all parties to the financing contract can honour their commitment. But what the private sector investors do acknowledge now is that green investment uh, is good, good, good business. Thank you. Thank you very much, Peter, um, and, and thank you for connecting the dots with what we heard this morning and in the afternoon. Um, I'm sure there will be some questions and remarks, but I want to pass the floor now to Zahir. Zahir, you've dealt with private sector issues, uh, how to mobilize them at your national level, but also in your functions of the